Hi, we are working on 6.3 and we're going to talk about least common denominators. So what I want to do is I want to go over how to find the least common denominator. Basically what you're doing is you're given two fa um, fractions and you have to find a number that the denominators can both go into evenly. So what I want you guys to do is just follow along with the examples and please go through and read all the notes that are all part of this. I am here to do the examples with you. All right, now, first of all, I know that the number five, um, I'm trying to find a number that 10 and 25 can both be evenly divided into. Well, they can both be evenly divided into um, 50, because I know that the factors of 10 are 2 and 5. I know that the factors of 25 are 5 and 5. So what happens is I know that, um, I'm trying to think of an easier way to um, go through this. I need to find a number that 10 can go into and 25 can go into. So what I would do is this. I circle the two numbers that they both share. They both share a five. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to multiply all the factors that are left. I have two times five, which is 10. 10 times five is 50. So 50 is the least common denominator. So right prior to this, there's a list of how to do, um, how to find the least common denominator. First, factor each denominator into its primes, and that's what we just did. List each different denominator factor the greatest number of times it appears in any of the denominators. Multiply the denominator factors from step two to find the LCD, which is the least common denominator. Now, I found the factors of 10. It's 2 times 5. The factors of 25 are 5 times 5. They both share a 5, so I circled the 5. So you're left with 2 times 5, which is 10, 10 times 5, which is 50. Now, I'm going to do the same thing for these. And remember, I'm only looking at the denominators. I don't care what's in the numerator. By the way, if I can reduce them first, try to reduce them, but I can't reduce these at all. So first of all, I have 8. I know that 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, and I'm left with m to the fourth power. Now for 12, I know that I have 2 times 2 times 3, and then m to the sixth power. So first of all, I know that 2 and 2 are together. And I know that these twos are together. This is just the way I do this in my head. I'm just showing you that those are sharing the two. So now what's going to happen is I have two times this two, which is four, times this two, which is eight, and eight times three is 24. So I end up with 24. So this is just one way because they're not written next to each other, so I can't circle them. So I just went ahead and drew a line, meaning they both are the same twos. And then the other ones are twos. So I can't count those twice. And then the variable happens to be the variable with the smallest exponent, and that is to the fourth power. So the least common denominator is 24m to the fourth. That means 8 can be divided into 24 evenly. m to the fourth can be divided into... Um, and actually, you guys, when you have a variable, you want to choose the variable with the largest exponent. Whoa, so sorry. Because m to the fourth can be divided into m to the sixth, but m to the sixth would, wouldn't go into m to the fourth. So it has to be the one with the largest exponent. Let me clarify that. Alrighty. So 24m to the sixth is the least common denominator. Let's try this again. Now for the next one, um, letter A, I would simplify this first. Let's, let me go ahead and start my timer. Sorry. So before I do this, I'm going to actually simplify it first. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 16 four times. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to, now I can just pretty much look at this. I know I have the number 4, so I'm going to write it out over here. It might be a little bit easier for you. 2 times 2 is 4. Then I have the number 9, 
and that is three times three. Well, all I have to do is just multiply all of them together. Two times two is four, four times three is 12, 12 times um, three is 36. So the least common denominator is 36. Now, they have an M to the fifth power. Remember, you want to use the one that has the largest exponent. Now, they also have an N. One of them has an N, but the least common denominator, they're all going to have to have an N. So it's going to be N to the first power. So the least common um, denominator is going to be 36 M to the fifth N to the um, N to the first. Now let's do this one. Now when you guys have something like this in the bottom, all you have to do is just multiply them together. They both have to have an X and they both have to have an X minus um, 7. So the least common denominator would be X times X minus 7. And that's the least common denominator. Okay, so let's actually do some problems. Oh, they still want us to do this. Okay, here we go. Um, on this one here, I'm going to have to factor out an X. So that's going to be X minus 4. I'm going to, this is a difference of squares, so that's going to be an x minus 4 times x plus 4. When you're trying to find the least common denominator, if they share something, you don't have to write it down twice. So there's an x in there. There's an x minus 4 in there, and you only have to write it once, even though there's two of them. And then there's an x plus 4. So you have to list them all. All right. Now, letter B is a little trickier. Um, letter B, you just have to write them both down. They are not the same. They look almost the same, but they're not. So you're going to have an X minus 1, and you're going to have a 1 minus X. So you're just going to have to write those out. Um, you could multiply the denominator. You can multiply this one here by negative 1 if you wanted to, and you would end up with x minus 1, negative 1 over x minus 1. You could do that, and your least common denominator would be x minus 1. So, I mean, you could manipulate it if you wanted to. Um, however, if you're ever in doubt, just that would be your, you, it all work out at the end. So, this would be your least common denominator if you took out a negative 1. All right, next one. Um, now we're going to actually solve these. Okay, so this part here is going to ask you find the missing portion. So what would you do to 4 to get 36? Well, you times it by 9. Whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. 9 times 3 is 27. Same thing here. What would you do to 5 to get 30 times it by 6? What would you do to, you know, 5? It would be 6K, actually. 6K times 5 is 30K. So whatever you do to the bottom, you got to do to the top. 6K times 7K is 42K squared. Okay? All right. Next one. This one here. What would you have done to 2A plus 5 to get 6A plus um, 15? Well, you would multiply this whole thing by 3. 3 times 2a is 6a. 3 times 5 is 15. Whatever you do to the bottom, you've got to do to the top. 7 times 3 is 27. Now, for the denominator. This here, they both share a k. So let's first factor it. So that gives me k plus 2. If you notice over here, I have a k and a k plus 2. But I don't have a k minus 1. So I need to... Multiply this by a k minus 1. Whatever you do to the bottom, you must do to the top. Now, I really am not going to multi actually multiply these together. I'm just going to write them out. Okay? So that is one way of doing it. All right, next one. Oh, there is no next one. All right. I will see you on the next video. Have a great day, everyone.